the weather forecast with Coloca and its multi-purpose banquet hall, Il Palazzo. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and hope you are stepping into the new year in a grand style. We will be between tonight and tomorrow morning have a calm weather condition across the nation with the possibility of isolated rains on the coast border near Niete. We would have temperatures as low as 7 degrees in the far north, 9 in the north, and 14 degrees in the east region. Temperatures will be as low as 20 degrees in the south region, 11 in the center, 15 in the west and the northwest region at 8 degrees. We take you over to the southwest where this evening would be a 0% chance of precipitation and by morning would be the same experience with Menji having the lowest temperature. We go over to the Adamawa region where this evening we have a 0% chance of rainfall and same experience by morning with Tignier having the least temperature at 12 degrees. On to the littoral region this evening would have a 0% chance of rainfall and same thing by morning with the lowest temperature at Kongsamba. Why not make our time to go see what the Edding waterfall looks like? Thank you for watching and good night. Coming up tonight, President Paul Bia reiterates his plans to make Cameroon an emerging economy by 2035 and calls on the private sector to contribute. We will get their reactions in this news. The Port Authority of Douala takes over the management of the Bonaberry Container Terminal, marking an end to activities of DIT subsidiary of the Bolloré Group. And Three suspects have confessed they kidnapped, raped, and mutilated a 10-year-old girl in a bong bang in what the police say was a gruesome ritual crime. The details now. Thanks for watching the 730 News on CRTV. I am Moki Edwin Kinzaka in Yaoundé. The second phase of the 2035 vision is expected to go operational this year with the aim of industrializing the country's economy while a number of shortcomings were observed during the execution of the first phase. Economists insist that addressing them adequately will determine the success of the 2020-2030 strategy. Clarice Aretakang reports. The main target of the first phase in the implementation of the growth and employment strategy paper was poverty reduction. Getting there implied building growth drivers in key sectors. In 10 years of execution, the energy and transport areas, for instance, were endowed with structures which are contributing their quota to the country's socioeconomic well-being. Access to basic services such as potable water and electricity is said to have considerably improved. The road network has also been tarred through the construction and rehabilitation of various stretches. In line with the objectives of the first part of the 2035 Vision 2, investments in the agropastoral sector followed, putting the need for economic diversification in the spotlight. Meanwhile, housing and urban development saw social amenities made available and access to health services opt with a building and rehabilitation of referral and district hospitals. These, however, fell short of resolving the poverty equation as intended. 37.5% of the population remains poor. Below 30% was the target. Experts agree that achieving sustainable and inclusive growth remains a stumbling block due to a number of factors. Addressing them is what the 2020-2030 strategy is intended for. Four pillars have been proposed to cover the shortcomings witnessed during the implementation of the 2010-2019 Action Plan. Analysts have recommended growing the domestic industry as a non-negotiable path on which to trade. Major players have been earmarked in a bid to take productivity to competitive levels. Trade for gain by transforming projects into job and wealth creation ventures. With education, training, research, health and social protection to ensure, human development has also been suggested to carry the 2020-2030 plan through. These are expected to lead up to decent employment for most. Putting all these on a profitable mission is governance, which economists insist must look at the specifics of particular domains and work on the strengths of each. It is the boast of the 2020-2030 vision. Achievable? Analysts say yes. If a number of prerequisites are met, they maintain. 
Entrepreneurs in the economic capital city Douala continue to read meaning into the head of state's New Year message which harps on Cameroon as an emergent economy by 2035 and the need to improve growth rates from 4%. Messi Ashu samples their opinions and now reports. The whole idea of moving Cameroon into an emergent economy by 2035 is still a mind-boggling subject for actors in the private sector who followed the head of state's traditional end-of-year message. The chief executive officer of Akma Media Group, Bonida Shako, insists Cameroonians must consume products made in Cameroon. If you look at the forces of law and order, the police, the, the, the army, the gendarmes and the rest, if you look at it critically today, you see that we are actually importing these uniforms. We don't want to import these uniforms. We have to encourage and invest into our local textile industry so that it can be done locally here because we have all the raw materials. Just like in 2018, the head of state remains hopeful it will be a marriage between the public and the private sector to move the growth rate above 4%. However, access to finance from local banks is still a challenge. When you look at the number of uh, enterprises that are put in place or have been put in place in the past uh, three years, it tells you that something is actually cooking. But now the problem is uh, for the local banks to come to the assistance of uh, uh, these local uh, organizations who have the ideas but actually lack the proper financing. So if emphasis uh, are not put uh, on financing, then I think the immigration of Cameroon by the year 2030 will only be a dream than a reality. Vision 2035 program is expected to respond to stagnating economic growth, increased population growth, urbanization, and poor governance. Overcoming security challenges, balancing trade deficits, and improving on governance are the leading economic aspects that can prepare Cameroon to emergence in 2035. Getting an economic growth to a two-digit level is a consequence of such transformational paradigm or paradigm shift as you tell us, Kilian Dandifon. Records of the National Institute of Statistics show that the all-time high gross domestic progress of Cameroon was in 2003 with the annual growth rate of 8.5 percent. The rate has plummeted and is difficult to cross 5 percent. Dependent on figures or not, what should be done to emerge? Overcome three major challenges. Firstly, security and peace, especially the Anglophone problem. Secondly, stabilize external trade deficits and invest more. And then thirdly, solve the governance equation. Which are the areas and how can the country use them to get to this paradigm shift towards emergence? The government has to complete and implement the major structural project as soon as possible. The government will work with the private sector to improve business climate, not only to attract the foreign investment, but also the domestic investment. Through this process, our local material will be, trans uh, will be transformed and we, are we will boost our local pro pro production in order to reduce our external balance deficit. Governance is another prerequisite for emergence. According to some economists, it is not so much dependent transformation of raw materials, nor even a two-digit figure economic growth rate, but rather technical and technological development that is possible with even a growth rate of 7 to 8 percent. President Paul Bia says he will continue to improve the living conditions of Cameroonians, push forward the economic growth and stand up to the security challenges in the northwest and the southwest regions of the country. In his end-of-year message to Cameroonians, the president announced better days ahead in spite of the challenging socio-political and economic environment. Kilan Dandifon once more. President Paul Bia, in his New Year speech, addresses three main issues, the social progress, the economic growth, and the preoccupying security problem, 
in the northwest and southwest regions. He begins with the social progress. This major complement to our democratic system is making great strides in its various components, namely education, health, employment, etc. Although obviously there is still room for improvement. President Paul Beer also talks about the economy underlining that the economic program has been concluded with the IMF, Inflation Controlled Budgetary and External Deficits Checked with Public Debt Within Limits, but Cameroon must forge ahead. The third point President Paul Beer highlighted was the preoccupying security problem in the northwest and southwest regions. Various measures have been taken in recent months to reason with these youth, most of whom have been brainwashed. They have been called upon to lay down their arms and social reintegration prospects have been offered them. And to this problem, President Paul Beer said the major national dialogue and the consequent recommendations with bilingualism, decentralization and special status, among others, are measures to remake our country one strong, stable, peaceful and prosperous. The new service provider of the container terminal at the Douala Sea Port has effectively started work. The container terminal management working as a concession of the Port Authority of Douala loaded its first ship this morning. Veronica Benyela reports from Douala. Despite contestations and counter-contestations by the former service provider of the container terminal in Douala, the Port Authority of Douala has ensured the continuity and fluidity of activities at the ports. Following the implantation of the new service provider known as the Container Terminal Management, CTM, the first ship under their management dug this morning. The entire management team of the Port Authority of Douala, led by the President of the Board of Directors, Mr. Shea Yembe, was there to witness. The DET's contract got uh, ended on the 31st of this December, that's two days ago and today we had to start with new operations with a new operating team and it's a new operating team that is doing it directly or delegated directly to some company working for the port of Douala so it was very important for us to come down today to make sure that the operations would effectively go on you would have seen that uh, they are offloading ships which is one of the most difficult things to be done. We have also verified that our softwares are working. Actively present was the Director General of Customs, Mr. Edwin Novaga Fongod, who says his interest is to ensure the continuity of revenue collection. We were dispatched down to Douala by the Minister of Finance, who asked us to come and make sure that uh, the three, four billion funds that we collect every day from customs operations are secured. You know, when we lose a day of collection, it's a lot of revenue that we are, we are losing. So our role here was to make sure that everything is free. Apart from the birthing activities at the seashore, personnel of the DIT now assimilated into the running of the CTM are busy in their offices following up on usual procedures. Most Yaoundé city dwellers have opted for love, patriotism and development as some of the virtues which they are going to adopt as New Year 2020 resolutions. Cinder Etim paraded the streets of the city of Yaoundé to get views of some inhabitants and brought back the support. The year 2019 has wrapped up with its numerous challenges. 2020 is here and the wish of many Yaoundé city dwellers for the new year is to personally contribute to bring back peace and love to 
This begins in their families. I have taken the resolution to live in conviviality with my colleagues, family and everyone around me. I wish for peace to reign in my family and in Cameroon. Love and forgiveness is their watchword for the year. The love for country is what many city dwellers have resolved to preserve. My primary resolution I wish to promote social coexistence and help eradicate tribalism. For the growth of the nation, many youths have promised their quota. I wish to improve on my agro-pastoral activities. I want to promote self-employment and help youth get jobs. For this year, I will conceive projects that will positively impact the lives of youth in Cameroon. Many Cameroonians are therefore working for peace and stability in the country, whether they succeed or not, to stick to their new year. Defense Minister Joseph Bete Asomo has challenged security and defense forces to ensure there is enough peace for each free elections come February 9, 2020. He transmitted the instructions of President Paul Bia during a two-day walking visit to the South region. Or region. Alben Jembonde was there. Driving through the rough and tumble of the rich equatorial forest and we are in Ebuengwan Day. Here we are just 600 meters from the borderline with Equatorial Guinea, and this is the village that suffered from an encroachment from its foreign neighbor. Joseph Betty Asomo and the military high commander explained the situation on the ground. The displaced demarcation pillars have been returned, the Cameroon flag is flying high, the populations of the two countries are living in harmony, and the security and defense forces are on the watch. This was a high point of two separate meetings the defense boss chaired in Ambam and Kyosi. For these localities serve as a road junction to Equatorial Guinea and Gabon and have problems of their own. Transborder crimes, illegal trafficking of light weapons, the illegal exploitation of Cameroon's flora and fauna, and clandestine immigration reassured that defense and security forces are on vigilance mode and that the population is going on with business as usual, the head of state's envoy to the South region left with guarantees that the security situation is globally under control. Officers, non-commissioned officers and soldiers of the rank and file serving at the Ngaundere military garrison have received epaulets corresponding to their new grades. Emos Enunyaket Agbo reports from the 5th military sector in Ngaundere. In all, there were 141 officers, non-commissioned officers, and soldiers of the rank and file who received new epaulets before a cream of the administrative and military top brass in the Edamawa region. Out of the 141 recipients, 13 were officers made up of four colonels, three lieutenant colonels, two captains, a lieutenant, and three sub-lieutenants. I believe that this new rank is also to make me to understand that there's a new tax in front of me and I just believe God will also help me to push me to accomplish this tax. On his part, the governor of the Adamawa region urged the happy recipients to work harder in ensuring the safety of the population and their property, adding that receiving a raise on the first day of the year is enough moral and professional booster for more productivity. These uh, rewards will uh, enhance the moral and, uh, to, of the so those soldiers to help us to fight uh, against uh, the rampant uh, criminality we know in our uh, region. An impressive march pass of military personnel drawn from the different corps showcasing military might and reassuring the population of their safety and it the ceremony. Internally displaced persons in the northwest region have begun receiving the special end-of-year humanitarian aid from President Paul Bia and his wife Chantal. The regional governor, Adolf Lili Lafrik Deben Chofo, supervised the distribution in two centers in Bamenda, where he asked beneficiaries to be agents of peace and development. Winston Lebga. 
The beneficiaries received food items like rice, cooking oil, sugar, sardines and supplies like a blanket and bars of soap plus 5,000 francs each as money for transportation. At the premises of the governor's office, the Northwest Governor Adolf Lelila Freak carries a baby girl, the daughter of one of the displaced women, to whom he gives a 10,000 francs note. He also gives the same to a woman with twin babies. I thank the, the governor for taking care of us. There is hope, more hope for all of us uh, come uh, 2020 in the Northwest region. We have uh, had a very busy 2019 with uh, many events, but at the end the situation is uh, being really stabilized. At the Guinness Field in Quen, displaced people resident in Bamenda 3 subdivision get their own share of the food and supplies. We have suffered too much and for this uh, Christmas uh, time and New Year, we are thankful to the head of state and the wife for thinking about us to start the New Year on a good footing. Governor Lele Lafri also took the presidential couple's end-of-year gifts to the regional hospital in Bermenda. Truckloads of President Bia and First Lady Chantal's gifts are moving to the various divisional headquarters for distribution to displaced persons there. Beautiful out there. Hundreds of internally displaced persons in Fako and Mimi divisions of the Southwest region have received relief materials from the presidential couple Paul and Chantal Bia. The distribution ceremonies were in the presence of administrative officials. Details with Regina Galen Doko and Tanjong Lewis. The internally displaced from Kumba 1, 2 and 3 subdivisions all received these items alongside financial aid to facilitate their transition into the year 2020. The largesse from the presidential couple has been described by the internally displaced as fatherly. Meantime, the authorities of the division used the occasion to call on all those still in the bushes to accept the hand of peace offered to them by the head of state. The distribution process unfolded in the presence of officials of civil protection and will continue in the days ahead with Mbonge and Konye subdivisions. Some 700 IDPs from Tiko, Idinao, Limbe 1, 2 and 3 council areas were at the Limbe 1 council to receive the items. Thank our pa, Pobia, as he has given us this gift, we'll be happy because we, we do not even know how we even pass the the new year. Thank the head of state for what he has done to us. We have been suffering and we have cried and at last he has done it for us. The gesture speaks volumes of the compassionate nature of the presidential couple. Sending these gifts at this time is to show the capacity of sharing. The IDPs say they are hopeful of a better life in the year 2020. A special edition of the monthly international magazine Jeune Afrique Economy has projected Cameroon's president Paul Bia as the dean of African politics and diplomacy who shares his wisdom and wide range of experience with other world leaders. Caroline Okea Noma read through the 327-page special edition of the monthly magazine and now reports. Africa economy. Bless Pascal Tala, the author and editorialist, captions this special edition as Paul Bia, Dean of Africa, who offers wisdom and experience to world leaders. The monthly magazine consecrates over 196 pages entirely to Cameron's dossier, which consists, for the most part, major events and activities orchestrated by President Paul Bia, as well as the Bia think tank put into practice. From President Paul Bia's brilliant initiative of convening a major national dialogue, which opened the door for possible solutions to the lingering crisis in the northwest and southwest regions, to the holding of a historic Heads of State Extraordinary Summit of CEMAG members in which pertinent issues concerning the sub-region were reviewed and resolutions arrived at so as to transform the sub-region into an emerging economy. The editorialist further unveils President Paul Bia's Reservoir of Wisdom during his presence at the Paris Peace Forum and the Lyon 8 Conference in which, according to the author, the presence, wide experience and wisdom were enjoyed by other world leaders. 
if there is anything that could be retained of President Paul Bia, according to the author, it is his political savvy and tactical methods in dealing with state matters. Other aspects found in the monthly magazine were a dossier on France Cameroon cooperation, Britain Woods and Culture. The special edition is already available in the market and costs CFA 4,000 francs. On to this human interest story, a suspected gruesome ritual crime has taken the life of a 10-year-old girl whose body was found dumped in a bong bang in the east region of the country. The three suspects placed under local police custody have admitted that they kidnapped, raped, and mutilated the body of the girl. Kilian Dandifon visited the family of the victim. End of December 2019 in Ausa Kota, a neighborhood in Abongbang East region, one of the ritual crimes again. The guy came from the other side of the house and asked me where Jamila was. And I told him that Jamila was with the mother, who is our teacher of the Quran. He went there and I don't know what they did to her. The 10-year-old innocent Jamila became a mere commodity in the hands of her predators. There were three. One said they were proposed 800,000 to kill my child. He added that they had received an advance payment of 20,000 francs. What they did to the little girl is heinous. When we found my child, the three confessed that they had raped a child of 10 years. Her underwears and wild leaves were forced into her throat, the head fractured, the neck broken and the thighs wide open. <laughs> like the mother, Jamila's father is devastated. The police has kept them under custody and asked me to be patient. If I were given the opportunity, I would kill them. It is so sad. The family of the victim seeks justice. Children dread going to the shop for fear of being kidnapped by all kinds of people, including those in big cars. It is above us. Government should ensure that justice is done for my child and others who will suffer the same pain. Let government stop this. Some will call it terrible. Others will describe it as horrible. It is simply devastating. The family is inconsolate that their 10 year old girl was kidnapped, raped, and killed by three hectic men for money. How much money? That is how far crime has gone in the country. Kilian Dandifon, life from the Aousa Kwata neighborhood in Abongbang, East Region. On the sports now, five African countries are expected in Yaoundé as from now to take part in a five-day international volleyball qualifying tournament for the 2020 Japan Olympic Games. Cameroon and Kenya, which are the two best African women's volleyball teams, are among the five countries to compete in the tournament that kicks off on Sunday. Baldwin Sama reports. It is a tournament that brings together the best women's volleyball teams in Africa, a tournament that will see just one out of these best qualify for Tokyo 2020. For this year's qualifying tournament, just five African countries will be taking part. Cameroon as host will welcome Botswana, Nigeria, Kenya and Egypt. Two matches will be played daily at the multi-purpose sports complex with each team to play four matches. At the end of the competition, the team with the highest number of victories grabs the loan available African ticket for Japan 2020. Cameroon's volleyball Lionesses African champions after weeks of preparations in Poland arrived the country this Thursday and will be participating without two of their best players, Leticia Muma, best African volleyball player, and Nasser Raisa, best libero in Africa. 
The African Volleyball Confederation will, for the first time, test the video challenge system during this competition. So we'll help the officials come to a decision in one of the challenges that the teams might make. The newest thing is just making sure we get the right decision and that the tournament is fair and competitive at the same time. Delegations and volleyball officials begin arriving Cameroon this Friday. And that ends the 730 News on CRTV. Before we leave you, President Paul Beer has reiterated his plans to make Cameroon an emerging economy by 2035. And